Chairs No Waiting, episode number 769, The New Housekeeper, 2024. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weaker, Weavers, all kinds of cool things over there, like the definitive Andy Griffith Show reference. Definitely a book that you would enjoy having as a reference book for yourself. And while you're there, check out the 2024 Mayberry Day-by-Day Flipbook calendar and the wall calendar. Uh, so those uh, Weaver still has them, but get them while you can. Uh, they're probably going to go on sale pretty soon, but you might not want to wait until then. Head over to Weaver's and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 769 is Rebecca Spears, the high sheriff of Mayberry. Uh, for seven sixty nine is Chris Schmerl and the Patreon patron of the week is once again Billy Billy Lennox. So Billy and Chris and Rebecca, thank you all for your support of the podcast. And wow, guys, thank you all for being here with me. <laughs> it has been great. This is our first live podcast of twenty twenty four. The other ones I have, I guess they're all recorded by the time you see them. But I haven't gotten to be with the live crowd that we have here in our chat room. We have a chat room that goes on on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern where everybody joins in and talks. And you can join in with all these folks uh, both on the chat room at live.twochairsnowaiting.com or over on Facebook if you would rather head over there and check out them. Or you can also be on YouTube in the chat room there. There's always people in those chat rooms visiting and talking. Uh, so I definitely encourage you, if you would like, and you're available on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern to join in with us. With us, I am Alan Newsom, the host of Two Chairs No Waiting. If you're new here, it is so good to have you. And if you're uh, coming back, thanks for being back and spending time here in Mayberry. So what we're going to do this this episode is we are going to talk about the episode, The New Housekeeper. Now, The New Housekeeper, we all know that episode. It's the very first episode of The Andy Griffith Show. And I've gone through this uh, in the past and tried to tried to always get started doing uh, episode reviews, and I never, I never finish. I always get sidetracked and never go back to wherever I started. So we're going to start over. We actually did a podcast about this back in April of 2019 that was hosted by my friend Kevin Burke because my it was when we mentioned a week or so ago when we were talking about our top 20 episodes of last year it was one of our top 20 and it was done by Kevin and so I wanted to take a chance and do one for myself and uh, try to do the new housekeeper but if you'd like to hear that one you can go back to episode number 524 and you can listen to it and, and I think you'll enjoy it So let me get a little bit of just some fun background music. Let's see how this one is. There we go. So let's talk about the new housekeeper. I know you've all, you've all seen these. You've all been a part of the, of the Andy Griffith show since the beginning. Now this episode came out on October the 3rd, 1960. We all know that it started off with Andy right there in the courthouse, uh, getting Rose and Wilbur married, right? So that's where it started. So we already know a lot of that stuff. So I want to talk about some of the memorable moments that were in these scenes, like for instance, or and people. Uh, so in this episode where Andy, uh, it's the very first, as I said, episode where in, in Andy's housekeeper, Rose is going to move away. He's marrying Wilbur Pine and uh, they're going to head out in uh, matrimony and of course Opie doesn't like it at all and at some point he even uh, is going to throw a whole box of uh, of uh, rice at them and he, he won't quit uh, so they <laughs> they don't like it so let me tell you some of the things that are some memorable scenes so Opie asking Andy's permission to run away from his home do you remember that it happens later in the episode they're sitting around in the in the bedroom there of Andy's house and Opie's saying he wants to run away from home. And Andy's basically telling him, I don't think you're doing this right, son. So you remember those, that event. So that's kind of what we're going to try to do tonight. Or this episode is talk about some things that we remember from these episodes. 
you remember uh, Naughty Deputy? Naughty Deputy. Remember that? <laughs> well, that was, of course, Emma doing that because Barney arrested her for jaywalking, and Andy had said, "We don't, we don't, we don't do that. You know, we don't arrest Emma for that. We let her save every step she can." So, in this episode, we see Mary Treen. She is Rose, and she's the one marrying Wilbur uh, in this episode. And she has also appeared as all kinds of various townspeople throughout the episodes. Now, Mary was born in St. Louis, Missouri on March the 27th, 1907. Among her regular television roles are Emily Dodger on Willie. It's a TV show. From 1954 to 55, and Hilda on the Joey Bishop show from 1962 to 1965. She guest starred in several series, and most notably the Donna Reed show, uh, Green Acres, and she was on the Brady Bunch as she played Kay. I don't know if you remember this. I do remember it. She takes Alice's housekeeping job, you know, after uh, Alice temporarily quits. The you know the housekeeper for the Brady Bunch, Alice. Uh, let's see. Uh, Train also has appeared in more than a hundred movies, including The G Man in 1935 with James Cagney. You know, G Man. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting little tidbit. She was on It's a Wonderful Life in 1946 uh, with Jimmy Stewart, of course, and she played in Paradise Hawaiian Style, a 1966 movie with. Elvis Presley, that's right. And she was on The Strongest Man in the World, a 1975 Disney movie with Kurt Russell. You remember that one? In later years, Train worked with former vaudeville partner and entertained elderly citizens at sanitariums and rest homes near her home in Beloa Beach, California. Now, her partner in this particular episode was Wilbur Pine, is who she was marrying. Uh, he was played by Frank Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson also would later appear in many roles in the series. Most notably, he was grocer Charlie Foley. He's a good man, but he's cheap. He's a good man. <laughs> Charlie Foley. Uh, Ferguson was born on Christmas Day in 19... I'm sorry, 1899. And he died in September the 12th in 1978. Among his regular television roles, which are many, were Gus Boyer on My Friend Flicka from 1956 and 57. And Eli Carson on the primetime serial Peyton Place. So this is a, this is a regular Peyton Place from 1964 to 69. When he later... When, with the later series, uh, when, it, when it became a daytime serial in 1972, he returned as Eli and continued in the role until the serial ended in 1974. He guest starred in many series, many, many of them, including episodes of Petticoat Junction, Gunsmoke, Lassie, No Time for Sergeants, Green Acres, Bonanza. Oh, my goodness. I could just keep naming them. Uh, Danny Thomas Show, Leave it to Beaver, Kung Fu. He was on there, and Maverick. He also appeared in 1976 made-for-television film The Mohicans, where he was Grandpa Mohican. Uh, Ferguson appeared in scores of motion pictures, and most of them, and well, many of them anyway, were Westerns. His films include Life Begins for Andy Hardy in 1941 with Mickey Rooney. Uh, they Died With Their Boots On in 1941. 41 with Errol Flynn. Wow, he he had some pretty good co-stars, didn't he? And Olivia Haviland, I should have mentioned. Rhapsody in Blue in 1945 with Robert Alda. Uh, Night and Day in 1946 with Cary Grant. And the list continues. I'm not even going to try to go through them all. But wow, what a great, great career he had as he went through there. Uh, went through his life. Now, I want to mention, because uh, this comes up from time to time, on on the episode, The New Housekeeper, Andy is seen waxing his car, washing the squad car outside his garage. Now, this garage that he's in is not what later becomes his garage. So when you see the episode, 
you'll see he's outside a garage, but it's not really at his house. It's not the same one we see the entire rest of the series. And you, you definitely see them rubbing the, I guess, supposed to be soap onto the car. But this is the thickest soap uh, to wash a car I have ever seen in my life. So when you watch that, it looks like they've rubbed wax onto the car. And he's using it to wash the car. So anyway, just something to be watching for as you go through the series, uh, through the episode as well. So as we mentioned earlier, Barney arrests Emma for jaywalking, right? Well, Emma is actually played by Cheerio Meredith. She was Emma Brand in this particular episode. Uh, she would later appear and uh, repeat this role during the first season. Uh, but however, in the second season, she appeared as Emma Watson. So for some reason, they changed her name from Emma Brand to Emma Watson. Don't know why. Don't know why. Uh, it was never mentioned or explained during the series. She was born in 1890, and she passed away on Christmas Day in 1964. She was a regular performer on the Ames Brothers show in 1955 and a regular cast member in the 1961 series One Happy Family and she played the character Lovey Hackett. Among the many series in which she guest starred uh, are the Donna Reeves show, Bonanza, Many Happy Returns, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Uh, in The Dick Van Dyke Show she appeared as Miss Pender in the episode Teacher's Petri. Teachers Petri, by the way. Uh, Meredith was quite active in movies, too. Among them are, she was on uh, The Fat Man in 1951 with Rock Hudson. Uh, I'll Cry Tomorrow in 1955 with Susan Hayward. I Married a Woman. Well, I Married a Woman, that's a movie? I Married a Woman, I've never seen that one. In 1958 with Lonesome George Goble. I never heard of him called Lonesome George Goble. George Goble, I only remember him from Hollywood Squares, uh, from my age, honestly. She was on The Legend of Tom Dooley in 1958, starring a young Michael Landon. And she did Three Stooges in Orbit in 1962 and The Wonderful World of Brothers Grimm in 1962. So that's some of the things that she did throughout her career. And she played the role as a naughty deputy. That's what, that's what I mentioned earlier. She did that. So in this episode, Andy performs a wedding ceremony between Rose and Wilbur as his role as Justice of the Peace. Uh, Barney plays that Here Comes a Bride, uh, the wedding march, with his harmonica. So people have asked before, could Don really play the harmonica? And i got to believe he probably could, or they wouldn't have written it into the series like they did uh, he refers to himself as reliable Barney Fife during this episode so that's something uh, this is the only episode in which Rose and Wilbur Pine appeared and the only episode in which Andy is shown owning a pickup truck hmm, a little trivia for you right there there you go there you go uh, fried chicken and watermelon are two of Opie's favorite foods. Fried chicken and watermelon. And I think Dickie really likes the fried chicken too, if I remember right. Opie's bird, Dickie. He really liked the <laughs> fried chicken. And it could be that he's a vulture. We're not sure. We're, we're not sure. He doesn't look like a vulture, but he did eat a lot of fried chicken. Andy and Opie perform uh, the duet, the Crawdad song, at the end of this episode. Uh, during Opie's bedtime prayer, he asked God to bless the following. He said his paw, his bird, Dickie, his lizard, Oscar, who ran away, Barney Fife, his friends, Jerry, Tommy, and Billy, uh, his dog, Gulliver, his white mouse, his snake, his snake is, uh, you know, that's, he had a snake. I never saw this. And Rose, even though she ran away and got married. Those are the things he prayed for. <laughs> in April of 1993, Ron Howard revealed on a television show, on the show uh, Later with Bob Costa, uh, that as a child, he actually owned a pet dog that was named Gulliver. That's where the, maybe the name came from, Gulliver. 
Andy claimed that he and Barney were cousins in this episode. This is uh, cousin Barney. I wanted them to know you're the you you put you looked at all the qualifications. You picked the best man for the job, and I want to thank you, cousin Andy. <laughs> Oh, so I know they tried to kind of downplay that later in different episodes and seasons. Never really mentioned it much, uh, but I just still think that is absolutely a, is an awesome thing. In five episodes of the series, including this one, a publicity photo of Aunt B can be seen in the house. So I don't think I have a screenshot of that for the folks that are watching the video, but you can see a screenshot of Aunt B when she first arrives okay so this is when you would see it all right uh let me uh, it's if uh, her younger days and you can see it when she uh, on the wall of the taylor's home in this particular episode the picture is hanging on the wall to the right of the kitchen door and andy and aunt b pass that right by it as they enter the kitchen after aunt b first arrives at the taylor home okay so that's when you would want to be watching for that so that is a publicity photo of Frances Bavier when she was younger. It's hanging on the wall there. Uh, so we, and and as we go through this, we'll we'll try to note other episodes where that appears as well. This particular episode did have a commercial that uh, we just don't ever see, uh, but we did have a commercial. Uh, and you can see it on the DVD sets. Okay, and, the, and Opie's in his room looking at his pet bird, Dickie, who's in the cage. And Andy walks in drinking a cup of Sanka coffee. Opie and Andy speculate on why Dickie returned. Andy says he might have come back for the good food. He then suggests that Opie finish Dixie's, uh, Dixie's, uh, Dickie's next meal with a cup of Sanka. When Opie expressed surprise, Andy points out that Dickie is a modern bird and Sanka is a modern coffee. Opie finally objects, reminding his pa that parakeets don't drink coffee. And Andy turns to the camera and marks that. The sponsor doesn't know that. And then he urges viewers to enjoy some Sanka themselves. So, folks, that information, by the way, is coming out of the definitive Andy Griffith Show reference that you can purchase over at weavers there's a lot of more stuff in there great book to have it's uh definitely something i encourage you to go and check out uh, there's a couple of other things that i don't have images of but i did notice as i was watching it in the episode we see uh, opie's bedroom when he's talking to andy about running away okay on the nightstand beside his bed right beside the door is a lamp that looks like a lamb uh, and it's the sh lampshade on it, uh, it's a lamb, like ceramic, with a lampshade with a lamp light in it. So that's seen in most of the episode. But if you watch the episode when Andy first goes in uh, to talk to him about Dickie, that is not there. There is a globe of the, of the world globe sitting on that side table beside the bed. Okay, so check that out. It somehow changes sometime between when Andy goes in and sees Dickie has eaten all the chicken and later when he goes back and Opie is there uh, thinking about running away. The, the stuff on that table changes. And it's probably a day later, but does he only have the lamp at night and then there in the day he switches the lamp for a, a globe? uh to sit there i don't know just a little trivia i noticed as i was going through it and i invite you to watch episodes like that and try to see if you can also find some of the little trivial trivialities that we experience all right guys so now it is time to grab your pencil and a piece of paper and we're going to play some mayberry trivia all right, there's our background music for Mayberry Trivia. Folks, these are the final five questions from the Mayberry Cruise Trivia from 2023, all right? So we're starting with question number 15, and we got 20 questions. Question number 15. So is everybody ready? You ready? All right, good. Everybody's ready. So let's see how they do. Folks in our chat room are ready as well. 
Okay, what is the Friday night special at the diner? What is the Friday night special at the diner? I don't think we've done these yet. I think these five are the ones we have not done yet. What is the Friday night special at the diner? Did we do these already? Boy, they seem familiar. Can you get them right? Have we movie done them before? <laughs> Can you get them right? So pause if you don't want to know if you're watching the uh, recorded versions of this. Uh, here comes the answer. What was the Friday night special at the diner? Catfish casserole. That's from season number four, and it's from episode number 123 overall. I don't know which episode that would be, but it is catfish casserole on Fridays. Catfish casserole. 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 All right. Number 16. Number 16. What size sock does Barney purchase from Burt Miller? Oh, what size sock does Barney purchase from Burt Miller? Thank you, Bert. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope he really needs it, though. What size sock does Barney purchase from Bert Miller? All right. So what size is it? The answer? <laughs> it's size 11. It's size 11. That's from season two, episode number 54 overall of the series. All right. Number 17. What is Otis's brother's wife's name? What is Otis's brother, his brother's wife, what is her name? What is Otis's brother Ralph's wife's name? So his brother Ralph, I'm trying to say this every way I can to help you. <laughs> his brother Ralph has a wife. What's her name? The answer and folks in our chat room are definitely getting it, is Verlaine. 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 V-E-R-L-A-I-N-E. Verlaine. I think this is episode, or season two, episode number 63 overall. So if you added up all the episodes from season one into season two, it's a 63rd episode. All right. Number 18. There's, we've got three left. Three questions left. I guess that's why. I think we did 15 last time, so you should have gotten that one. Because there's six questions. I can't, I can't subtract. All right. So number 18. How many years did Dud Wash spend in the Army? How many years did Dud Wash spend in the Army? Hmm. All right. How many years did Dud spend in the Army? With those mountain gladiolas in his belt. How many years was it? The answer? It was three years. He was there for three years. And that's from season three, episode number 88 overall. 88. So three years he spent in the Army. Number 19. We've got two left. Number 19. How much does Mrs. Lesh claim that she owes for her late husband's funeral expenses? <laughs> How much does Mrs. Lesh claim that she owes for her late husband's funeral expenses? Because she overheard how much Barney said he had. <laughs> how much does Mrs. Lesh claim she owes for her late husband's funeral expenses? The answer? The answer, you can pause again if you don't want to know, is... Oh, this says it's $140. $140. Huh. $140. Season 3, episode 90. So, that's not the total cost of the car, is it? That's not the total cost. This is for the funeral expenses only. So, he had other bills. Is that what we're saying here? I believe that must be right. Jim Sherrill in our chat room is the Mayberry Days trivia champion. And he said 140. So I'm going to go that our answer is correct. And I'm guessing that she also talked about other bills her husband had that totaled up to $294 and some number of cents. I can't remember. That goes to your 
that goes to your husband's favorite charity. <laughs> I got three hundred dollars in the pocket. All right, so it's one hundred forty-eight dollars. All right. So here is the final question from the 2023 Mayberry Cruise. Question number 20. How much life insurance did Racine Tyler's husband leave for her? How much life insurance did Racine Tyler's husband leave for her? Mm. Mrs. Lesh, huh? Let's see here. I'm going to try to look that up while we're looking. How much life insurance money did Racine Tyler's husband leave for her? Hmm. Okay. The answer is four thousand dollars, and it comes from uh, that comes from episode or season five, episode one twenty nine. So let me look here. I am looking it up in our thing here. So here is the answer to our question. Mrs. Lesh claims she owes $140 for her late husband's funeral expenses uh, when he was laid to rest. So that is what she says. It says it right here in the book. I'm looking at the book. Now, the book could be wrong, but he does say that she does go on to say she states uh that with her late husband's funeral expenses coupled with lawyer fees and property and inheritance taxes, that equaled two hundred and ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents that Barney happily pays. Okay, and she can he, she can donate the two dollars and fifty cents to Bernard Lash's favorite charity. <laughs> but it was one hundred and forty dollars for the funeral. All right, guys, how did you do? So you actually had six questions. Question number 15 was actually I had asked a couple of weeks ago when we last did a live show before Christmas. Uh, so that was kind of a free question. You should have been able to get it because you'd heard the answer before if you've listened to the podcast. If you haven't, then, well, you may, you might have missed it. So there you go. So how did you do? Did you get uh, five? Did you get six? How many did you get? How many did you get? So, folks, uh, the last thing I want to run through really quick here, it just as a reminder, over on our uh, website, if you go to imayberry.com, if you go to imayberry.com right there uh, on the front page, you can see a thing that says cast an episode database. Cast an episode database. And right below that, you'll see one that says cast birthdays if you go to cast birthdays guys you can you can go there and you can search for all kinds of stuff uh i, I can make it search for instance for everybody's birthday that was in january the first you know the the first through the ninth and we can look and see who who it is that had a birthday in the last week so we let's just talk about them a little bit so on january the second uh the first floyd but uh, walter baldwin was born on january the second 1889 wow look at that uh asa brini asa asa he also played doc roberts he was uh, charles p thompson he was also born on the second of january but in 1891 uh, Mrs. LaGrange, she was born the second as well. Uh, she was played by Jesslyn Fax. Joseph Hamilton, who was Chester Jones, he was born on the, the New Year's Day in 1899, guys. Wow, how cool. Uh, our very own uh, uh, Fred Boone, that's right, Fred Boone himself, uh, he was born, uh, it's Jess White, by the way. He was born on the 3rd of December. And then on the 4th of December, we had Burt Miller. Oh, Sterling Holloway, Burt Miller, born on the 1st. He was born on the 4th of January, 1905. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And we had Miss Morgan. Uh, I don't remember Miss Morgan. It was Helen Klebe. She was born on the 6th. Executive producer Danny Thomas himself was born on the 6th as well. And Lee Van Cleef. Now, he was uh, he was on the episode uh, when Barney's replacement was coming in there. Not Barney's replacement. The uh, 
uh, doggone it, uh, Dick Van Dyke's brother, Jerry Van Dyke uh, was on it. He was on that episode. He was born on the 9th of, D- of January, 20, I mean, 1925. So that, those are the folks that were born in the last, you know, last little bit. So let's look and see now who was born in the weeks coming up. Cause right now, as I record this, we're talking about the, uh, we're on the 8th, and it'll be coming out on the 9th of January. So let's see who was born beginning on the 10th. Uh, our very own Charlene Darling, Maggie Peterson, was born. Uh, all these, this is just making me smile. Uh, my, almost, I'm, I think every one of these people, pretty much what we've mentioned so far, have passed away, but they are not forgotten, and we do remember them. So well. So Maggie, what a wonderful lady she was. Uh, passed away just a, a year and a half ago or so. Uh, let's see, on the 10th as well, Miss Rosemary. The 10th of January, Miss Rosemary Amzy Strickland was born. Uh, let's see, the 13th, we had uh, Lucy Matthews. Lucy Matthews, played by Marlene Willis. Uh, she was born on the 13th of January. And the 15th of January, January was Hilda May, Barney's girlfriend. Uh, it was played by Ida May McKenzie. She was born on the 15th. And on the 18th, we had Billy Gordon. Billy Gordon, uh, one of the Gordon boys. Uh, Orville Sherman is his name. He was born on the 18th. The 19th was Harold Grigsby. Harold Grigsby, uh, blonde right out of a bottle. I believe I'm getting that correct. <laughs> He was born, it's uh, gets Kelly Thornson. Uh, he was born on the 19th, as was Rafe Hollister, Jack Prince himself, the 19th of January. So, guys, you can head over to the imayberry.com website. There's a Mayberry cast birthday list. If you know of cast members that are not listed there, by the way, if you go there and you don't put anything in the search box and you sort by, I don't know, last name or something, you can tell it to sort on last name. And, and it will, uh, it will go and do all of them. There's uh, 310 cast members listed there and you can go and look at every cast member and what their birthday is. And, uh, and if they passed away, that date is in there as well, unless I have forgotten or not known about it and not placed it in there. So this is a good resource for you as a fan of the Andy Griffith show to go in there and check it out. And again, you get to it by going to the front page of imayberry.com. And there in the front page, you go to cast birthdays, cast birthdays. It's kind of halfway down, uh, or not even halfway, about a third of the way down on the right hand side. So guys, there you go. I hope, I hope this is fun. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you liked it. I, I kind of thought it might be fun to talk about some of the uh, the cast members to just mention them as their birthdays come along, uh, just to kind of, I don't know, make it more just, just to remember them because they have brought us all so much joy over the years, watching them every week or every night or however often we watch of the Andy Griffith show. And it is just, uh, it's absolutely amazing uh, just all the stuff we've been able to experience with them. So guys, I am so glad to be back here in Mayberry with you. I hope you have enjoyed the podcast tonight. I know I did. I enjoyed hearing some of this stuff and I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com or just head over to imayberry.com slash podcast or two chairs no waiting.com both go to the same place and look at all the different ways you can contact me there i would love to hear from you as i know folks here would as well uh, i got a lot of nice christmas cards from you guys uh, many people during christmas thank you very much they were both online uh, electronic cards or actual physical cards from some people thank you all for those i'm i just can't send them to everybody but folks until next time have a great mayberry week and we'll see you here on two chairs